Esteemed yeah. colleagues, good uh, afternoon. You see Ukrainian uh, Center for Reforms who is ready to start its work. Today we'll be talking about Prozora system. There is an uh, attempt to disseminate this experience uh, not just on public procurements. This draft is in the parliament, but what's happening with it? Um, uh, we will hear from the participants of today's press briefing. I would like to invite them to tell us who and why is afraid of the reform of the public procurement. Good afternoon. I'm Maxim Nifyodov, Deputy Minister of Economic Development and Trade of Ukraine. Basically, I believe to answer the question who's afraid uh, of the reform of public procurements is uh, the answer to that is these are people who lose about 50 billion grivnas a year, which they get um, in the result of corruption and uh, different types of fraud during public procurement. They are not happy with what is happening, especially taking into account uh, the fact uh, that uh, uh, there is uh, the war going on between those who want reforms and those who want to delay them. They believe that is some sort of a game. It will be the limited in volume or will be. Uh, so imperfect that they will still have some uh, ability to work. Probably you, some of you know already that we are completing our pilot project, uh, which was started in the end of February 2015 to test the system, to test uh, and to show the architecture to demonstrate that this reform uh, could be implemented because people believe that nothing could be done, there's no sense, nothing could change uh, for the better. This pilot, which uh, uh, is about 2% of procurements, uh, 30,000 tenders have been already uh, executed. Uh, we have uh, about uh, 7 billion uh, grivnas worth of tenders uh, which were included into this um, uh, pilot project. And it is important that this pilot uh, allowed to save about 12% of tenders for the state, about 500, 5 million grivnas. This economy is practically the sums uh, which we took away from potential abuses of public procurement. Is that a complete victory? Of course not. I can do not want to uh, tell you uh, fairy tales, uh, the reform which is uh, uh, separated from other reforms. Uh, is still like a weapon which allows us to fight against the old corrupt economy against which we are working now in the government, implementing the reform. We want to disseminate this pilot to all the public procurements in Ukraine. Now we have 2% which allow us to save about half a billion if uh, this will cover all 250 billion of public procurements of U in Ukraine. If we do not improve anything, if we do not introduce even risk management, if we do not work with education uh, of uh, those who are involved into public procurement, we will be able to save up uh, to. Uh, 30 billion grivnas, which we uh, lose. Uh, 
we are trying to um, do uh, we, 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 those people who don't want to lose the cash flow and this cash flow could be used to improve the social situation in the country that is uh, money is used to purchase some villas in Monaco to purchase this golden loaves of bread and these pe people together with uh, the lawyers very professionally are trying to overcome our system and I'm happy that we had uh, not a single technical problem not a single uh, problem in the processes that we are implementing. The draft uh, law 3559 is already in the parliament. Sasha will talk about that in detail, but it's very simple. It covers, uh, uh, it, it uh, um, basically corrects all the mistakes and it explains how the system of public procurement uh, prozora should work. We uh, launched the pilot to move from theoretical discussions to real work. We wanted to have something which is uh, checked by dozens of thousands of transactions and then to suggest this experience to the Verkhovna Rada. We are very much surprised. We understand that we expected to have this resistance, but we are very much uh, astonished that for a month this draft law is in the parliament, that it hasn't been even considered by the committee because of different re uh, reasons. There were attempts made to get this draft registered. Uh, so this is the war. And uh, in the war, all means are good. But nevertheless, I would like to emphasize that this step is uh, very important. Uh, we can uh, uh, change uh, uh, or replace the judges, but if people come who uh, get about 50 billion grivnas uh, of potential bribes, then this will be the chicken and egg situation, the vicious circle. And we are complicating the work of the reformers who work in some other sectors, or if we do not have a just a judicial system, we will not be able to do something. Because people say, we see abuse in your system. We also see that, but who will put these people, these criminals into prison? I also would like to uh, briefly talk about uh, the fact that the draft law is a result of very uh, hard work and very difficult consensus. It is difficult to take into account all the opinions, but I believe we took into account about 80, 90 percent of all the uh, comments that were provided, and they are very diverse because those who are in procurement, they want uh, to have a a simpler process, the representatives of anti-corruption bodies want to have something more transparent. Uh, the representatives of suppliers always want to have uh, chances for uh, bigger uh, competition. The clients say, well, we have uh, uh, some bad uh, supplies, let's uh, limit their access. This is always, uh, uh, this always leads to conflict, but we are working with the clients, with the suppliers, with the anti-corruption organizations. We have found some uh, 
golden medal and we would like to thank the representatives of reanimation package of uh, reforms uh, and the center um, of uh, fighting corruption are the NGOs which made a big contribution into this process because uh, I um, believe that uh, we are the hands of the civil society in uh, the uh, governmental bodies. So we will be trying to get to the throat of corruptionists. And I hope that Verkhovna Rada, despite uh, all these uh, important changes, they will find uh, time to consider 3559. And we also know that uh, the economy from this reform is uh, included into the draft budget. I even know the figure. From our point of view, that is one of the simplest, uh, most efficient models to uh, reduce the public expenditures because it will be working from the very first uh, day. That's not like a pension reform, which is complicated, hurting, controversial. This reform will start working from the very first day we will start saving money from the very first day uh, because uh, it shouldn't be implemented. Uh, you shouldn't be asking questions who will do what. So now I would like to thank you all and I hope that we will uh, finalize this process. Since you mentioned that you see the draft budget and you know about the saved in money, um, what are the protectors built up in the mm, uh, system? Uh, of course, we requested the Ministry of Finance to create some um, protecting uh, figures. Uh, our reform uh, did not take any public money. We received money from donors, from Vedrozhina, from DTZ, from um, uh, other donors. And I believe that uh, the ministry will find some um, possibilities to extend the system to carry out some training regional workshops uh, and uh, to uh, buy some equipment of course uh, we are ready to a situation when we won't get uh, anything uh, Mm. Although I came from business and I understand that uh, uh, the um, return from this reform could be huge. Uh, let's uh, put uh, a full stop here and give the floor to Alexander. Uh, uh, we can speak a lot about the uh, reform of public procurement, but as soon as the word budget uh, comes to discussion, uh, everybody uh, starts thinking about the budget. I'm uh, Alexander Starodubtsev. I am a director of the public procurement regulation at the Ministry of Economic Development and Trade of Ukraine. and. Uh, I immediately joined the process of uh, reform in public procurement soon after my done. Mm, uh, the Prozora project uh, already has a long history of its implementation. Uh, First, uh, after my done, we, when we started thinking how public procurement should lo look like, then we developed various uh, concepts and visions. Uh, at that time, I used to be a public activist. Later, I became an employee in the department, or in public procurement department in the ministry. And uh, today, I can state 
that the draft law 3559 is the final uh, stage in this long way, in this long road. Um, we made several attempts uh, to reform uh, uh, public procurement. It was uh, 1197 uh, law passed uh, uh, with support of Pablo Sheremet, the then Minister of Economy, and now we suggest new, uh, uh, better law. The first uh, law, number 2057, which we managed to, to pass in September this year, this was continuation of this reform, and now 3559 is the final stage. Why uh, we have two draft laws here on our infographics, 3559 and this is the basic law. It introduces um, electronic procurement uh, procedure in Ukraine. Why 3560? This is about necessary amendments to the budget uh, um, for this year related to this first law. What are the novelties of this law? There will be four different procedures for public procurement. Also, we introduced online uh, appeals for those who are not content with the bidding procedure. Also, it uh, strengthens transparency. Uh, it, is po it will be possible to review who submitted the bids, uh, what, w what were the bids about, and what decisions were made based on those bids. Uh, that is, those um, suppliers uh, who are ready to offer their services and uh, um, material supplies honestly and transparently uh, for them, this system will be very convenient. That's why in our legislation, everything um, from the first step of uh, um, registering bids up to final stage, stage of uh, selecting the winner um, will be online and will be transparent. Besides the online mode of public procurement, this law introduces uh, uh, several provisions how to make public procurement more professional. One of the uh, source of losses uh, is rooted in the fact that uh, officials dealing with public procurement, they are not familiar with the most efficient procedures and uh, um, they are not experts in the issue. Quite often, they are uh, not familiar with the subjects of their procurement. Uh, and quite often for the uh, customers, uh, um, the uh, most important body is the state financial service, who at a later stage will carry out an inspection and approval of the um, uh, bid procedure. That's why we decided to create the Special Procurement Office. And uh, uh, when you need just some simple type of supplies, um, you should not uh, do this at the uh, uh, lowest level. You can do this at more centralized level. That is, it should not be like a small hospital in the village, but this could be the regional health department, which will organize this procurement, and uh, uh, it will um, offer better uh, price, it will be uh, able to deal b for better quality and for uh, bigger uh, numbers, uh, bigger quantity. Uh, that's why uh, 
uh, we say that we need better experts. This is a good trend. Uh, generally, Europe accepted at the European law level. Another important aspect is that uh, the winners uh, should be avoided not by uh, the tender committee members, but uh, experts in bidding who might be hired uh, or commissioned by uh, the agency itself. That is, we suggested outsourcing of the bidding committee quite often today tender committee is just a group of voluntary experts who are uh, gathered uh, on ad hoc basis around the agency we understand that this is not right way to work while in europe they have professional Bidders, professional experts in uh, public procurement, and uh, they invite them or outsource this type of service to them. I would like to emphasize that the draft law which uh, um, exited the parliament is uh, very well balanced. Uh, we tried to involve all uh, civil society activists, uh, many experts, uh, and uh, I believe we managed to produce the high quality document. We are not shameful for it. They would like to underscore that civil society activists played a really important role and contributed much, especially to anti-corruption issues. With this, I will give the floor to Ines Sherban, and she will explain about anti-corruption aspects. I am Elena Sherban. I represent the NGO Center of Counter Action uh, to Corruption public procurements uh, are the sphere where there are many corruption problems. And our organization is doing monitoring of public procurements. Sometimes um, we see some changes that uh, change the system to the better, some change to the worse, but we need to do something with that. Why I am here? Because the law on public procurements, to our mind, uh, takes the system of fighting corruption to a different level. We shouldn't be lying to ourselves. We shouldn't be saying that the law will eliminate corruption. It will not happen so. We cannot pass the law that would overcome corruption. But it will allow us to see public procurements in a different way. Uh, angle. Electronic procurements allow us to analyze what's happening in public procurements at a different level. This will allow us to see all the analytical information, who buys what, for how much. This is no secret that uh, uh, we didn't have such analytical information in the state. People were writing what they uh, believed should be written or what uh, others would tell them to write. We believe that the MPs would vote and would start considering this draft law. It looks strange uh, what's happening in the Rada. No one wants to discuss uh, the draft uh, and this uh, inactivity, which we believe uh, means uh, that some MPs do not want to vote, they do not want to overcome the schemes, and they don't want uh, uh, to make what's happening in public procurements understandable for everyone. Myself, as the member of the civil society, I participated in all the discussions that I can sell that all people that would want to give their proposal to the draft law had the chance to do so. 
but what we see now is uh, that there are some alternative uh, drafts uh, developed uh, which uh, uh, lead to the fact that no one pays uh, uh, sufficient attention to this draft law. And our, uh, my uh, task today is to draw attention of MPs to the fact that they have to discuss, uh, they have to vote for that draft law because it's a great engine uh, for taking the corruption, the fight against corruption to a new level. Any questions? Um, well, uh, the situation looks strange. It's sort of everyone is for it, but you don't want to give us the names and the law is not approved so that it's not too late to name people. I understand there is the political process going on. Maybe you will tell us where there are no opponents or where there are opponents and which faction so that we bring, give some new information about that topic because I understand those people who are here, they would like to hear this information. Okay, I will tell that. Um, opposition to this draft uh, looks very uh, funny because uh, any feedback starts from positive reaction. They say, well, finally something is being done. Now we will have these electronic procurements. That's great. That's great that you have drafted it. The only problem is maybe let's make a working group uh, to discuss it, uh, to discuss what is suggested. Maybe that uh, is some new harmful initiative. But we are for it. We do support it. It's quite strange. We know that um, uh, now the opinions are being collected from different organizations, uh, research organizations, those who have nothing to do with procurements, to feedback of all the uh, authorities, and uh, I'm happy to see that even opponents cannot find any significant reason to criticize. Any document could be improved. Some people say that you are introducing electronic procurements for too, it takes you too long to introduce them. Why don't you kill corruptionists? Uh, some say this happens too fast, would give us at least a year, two years. But if you uh, put aside all these chaotic ideas, there's not a single uh, grounded criticism. There are remarks which we can take into account. Uh, any draft uh, which is uh, passed uh, is uh, no no draft is ideal, but I am. Uh, uh, it's difficult for me to give you names. Uh, there are no opponents. Basically, I will be surprised if someone comes here and says we are against the law and public procurement, all that fighting corruption, all this transparency that's invented. We do not know why. We are happy with the, everything which is done in this sphere of public procurement. So basically, we do not expect that to happen. But first of all, that is the attempt to use uh, some procedures for this process, to, to do the delay the whole process. Let's be realistic. Uh, for some uh, people, that could mean billions of uh, money earned, uh, which for us is just a month of delay. So it's strange. They try well. They it's not strange that they're trying to delay this reform. Any honest MP should have a desire to consider it as fast as possible. They may have some comments. Everything could be improved, but to delay the consideration—that's strange, because delaying the 
Consideration means that every day we lose money, that the money is stolen from us, from taxpayers. It's very simple. It's not about improvement of the system uh, of, I don't know, lighting, which probably works now, but we can improve it. But it doesn't work. Every day the money is stolen. Every day when we do not implement the electronic system of procurement, the system which has uh, demonstrated its uh, efficiency every day, someone's earning. The more it continues, uh, the more obvious it will be who's against. Good afternoon. At the press conference on Friday, Director General of uh, Ukrzalesnica mentioned that despite the fact that the law is not passed, they gradually uh, shift to the um, to this uh, electronic system of public procurement. Why they are doing this? Because for any uh, honest uh, um, customer, the uh, uh, electronic procurement, uh, uh, which is transparent, uh, um, is uh, more uh, more good. For example, uh, 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 somebody offers you uh, 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 something for hundred thousand for ninety thousand room now, but you say. Um, well, we used to buy this for 100,000 grivna, and your um, uh, interlocutor says, well, when when it uh, will be online and uh, we will sell it for 80,000 grivna, uh, we will decrease the amount by, by that time, let us uh, offer this at bigger price. So what could be the motivation not to use this uh, system? What advantages does it give to the companies in uh, um, respect of investment, involvement, etc.? Of course, this increases your uh, returns and your revenues and uh, uh, this creates advantages and uh, emphasizes your tra transparency. That is what we used to say to local authorities. Uh, uh, if you are able to show that you managed to buy, uh, to, to buy uh, seven buses instead of five with available resources, Mm, you later in election campaign will be able to say that uh, mm, you managed to do more with limited resources. Uh, so I would add about uh, uh, impossibility to use uh, Prozora. The law on public procurement uh, uh, is effective for uh, those uh, procurement operations which are higher than some threshold. By the threshold, um, nobody um, tried to uh, to track those uh, uh, public procurements. Uh, uh, and uh, um, when thinking how to introduce this electronic system, we started to look at the under threshold um, uh, procurement deals. Um, and uh, f as a pilot project, we launched uh, uh, this electronic system for under threshold deals. We uh, started many. Um, uh, complications existent in uh, this practice and then included them to the law. Maxim, very short question about the passage of this law. Do you expect it to be included to the agenda this week? 
Or did you manage to remove uh, uh, all those um, aspects which prevented MPs uh, uh, from putting it to the agenda and uh, for voting? Uh, we um, have a strong intention to see it in the agenda, in the parliamentary agenda this week. We would like to see our uh, opponents. Uh, because in general, we are supported by almost all factions, but mm, when it and uh, uh, co the coalition factions, uh, uh, MPs uh, not belonging to coalitions, uh, um, they express their general support to, to this draft law. This is actually the reform which could be done very quickly. Standing here, I tried to. Um, say, uh, please do not think that all MPs are uh, equally inefficient. There are many people who are ready to work hard. Uh, we, But nevertheless, we would like to have uh, more uh, supporters in the parliament, at least 226. As for the counteraction to this draft law, it would be good uh, to invite uh, journalists to the committee sessions, um, which would uh, prevent a uh, uh, committee from non making decision on the law. We would like to invite journalists to the committee session this week, probably. We, we hope this will happen this week, but we are not sure. Mm. Preliminary on Wednesday at noon, please uh, come to the committee session. Uh, if my colleagues have no, I have just one small comment. Why for us it seems a little bit strange when everybody wishes to create working group, one more working group. Because I don't think there is another reform as opened as this from its first day. In, on my Facebook uh, page, I uh, sh uh, put a lot of materials on this topic. I, I reflected all the passage, all the drafting of this law. This is not an unexpected law. This is the reform which is very well developed. Uh, you, you can observe our statistics on biprozora.ua. You can review our Facebook pages and see clearly what was suggested, see all the comments and what was done. If there are no further uh, questions and no more sensational information, uh, let's uh, wrap up now. And uh, I hope that by the end of the year, we will hear from you about passage of this law. Dear colleagues, we have finished our today's work and please follow up 